everyone. This is Dr. Javier Sashiro, Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So we are discussing about uh, engineering tribology subject. The engineering tribology subject is the part of uh, engineering uh, study and uh, as well as uh, material science. So already you know uh, it involves this uh, engineering tribology subject involves mainly on uh, friction, wear and uh, lubrication parameters. So up to now uh, we have discussed about uh, the friction phenomenon and uh, wear and then uh, types of uh, frictions and the types of wears and what is the importance of uh, the friction and wear and lubrication uh, uh, parameters in engineering tribology. So today uh, we will discuss about uh, the wear uh, the properties. So in that we have discussed the types of wears and uh, some surface treatments also we have seen in the previous uh, sessions. So in this session so I want to discuss about what are the surface modifications and then uh, how to measure the friction and uh, wear. By modification of the uh, surface, we can improve the uh, wear properties and uh, friction properties as well as uh, characteristics of uh, product. So those things uh, we will uh, see in this uh, presentation. So first of all, introduction part the surface modifications refer to the alterations the changes made to the outer layer of a material or object so the it is mainly focus on the outer the outer surface of the product the outer surface of the component so that is a layer see you can change the layer of uh, thickness and uh, the layer coating. So often to improve its properties or functionality. So by changing this uh, uh, the surface modifications, you can improve the properties of the uh, product. So these modifications can involve the physical, the chemical and uh, biological process. So and are commonly employed in various industries such as uh, in uh, manufacturing industry, electronics industry, biomedical engineering industry and uh, material science. So mainly the surface modi uh, modifications involve uh, uh, like these uh, uh, industries and uh, physical and chemical and biological process. So some common surface modification techniques include, so those techniques uh, we will see that that is coating. The coating is a thin layer of material applied onto the surface to enhance properties like uh, corrosion resistance, wear resistance, or uh, aesthetics. So, examples including painting and uh, electroplating and the chemical vapor deposition, like this uh, abrasion and uh, galvanizing process, like this, uh, many coating methods are there already we have discussed in um, earlier session. So by applying this thin layer of material onto the surface, for what purpose we are doing, what purpose we are applying this um, coatings to enhance the properties. Which type of properties? The corrosion resistance, wear resistance and aesthetics means appearance, the color wise and uh, look wise uh, and uh, these all these and um, and environmental um, conditions so the, all these things you can enhance by by using this type of uh, coatings so by applying these uh, these coatings that is uh, depends upon the application and depends upon the the material so ultraplating uh, method is there Electroless uh, uh, method is the process is there, and then uh, painting, galvanizing process, carburizing, 
chemical vapor deposition so all these things uh, uh, process are there the coating methods the these methods uh, we can uh, uh, apply uh, according to the uh, the type of uh, material or uh, depends upon the application so very coatings uh, plays important role in, uh, in engineering tribology so depend upon this uh, coating uh, the material uh, properties uh, or characteristics of the product you can uh, improve or you can uh, change so next one is surface softening this surface softening uh, process uh, is a one type of uh, surface modification technique so creating micro or nano structures on the surface to alter properties like uh, adhesion friction or uh, light absorption so creating the micro or nano structures so techniques such as uh, sand blasting etching and uh, laser uh, ablation can be used for this uh, purpose so this type of uh, process is called as uh, surface roughening so you can uh, create by using this uh, surface roughening uh, micro or nano structures uh, during uh, this adhesion process or during in the friction that is surface functionalization so introducing functional groups or molecules uh, onto the surface to modify its uh, chemical properties this can enhance properties like uh, biocompatibility adhesion or uh, catalytic uh, catalytic uh, activity and uh, methods include uh, chemical grafting self assembly and plasma treatment the surface functionalization mainly focus on so whenever the molecules onto the surface to modi to modify its uh, the chemical properties and we are introducing so we are introducing some group group of molecule onto the uh, required the surface so for what purpose we are um, uh, introducing these um, molecules to enhance the properties which type of properties like uh, biocompatibility and uh, adhesion property and the catalytic uh, activity property to enhance to improve these uh, three pro methods properties so in previous case in previous uh, uh, surface in a coating uh, in coating method you can enhance the uh, properties like corrosion resistance and wear resistance by applying thin layer of coating so similarly in this uh, process we are introducing some molecules onto the surface to improve this type of uh, the three uh, the type of uh, properties those biocompatibility adhesion and uh, catalytic activity so methods include the chemical grafting self assembly or plasma treatment other methods also there next one is surface engineering the surface engineering uh, in this the modifying the surface composition or structure to achieve specific properties so modifying the surface composition or structure so entire structure you can uh, modify so it means the composition of the surface you can uh, modify the composition you can add uh, you can add one element or you can remove the one element so like this you can uh, uh, change the, the composition or structure entire structure uh, also you can change by introducing some uh, other um, molecules to achieve specific properties the techniques such as uh, ion implementation and uh, ion exchange ion implementation implementation and then uh, uh, and uh, surface alloying uh, fall under this category these three uh, techniques uh, comes under this uh, surface engineering method next one is surface structuring the texturing means creating patterns or uh, structure on the surface to control properties like uh, hydro proposity optical properties or tribological behavior so you can uh, control the, the tribological behavior like uh, friction waves wear properties you can uh, control you can't 
eliminate uh, entire thing but some water you can minimize or some what you can control creating patterns or structures on the surface to control properties uh, like uh, hydrophobicity city or optical properties by using this uh, method uh, surface uh, structure uh, so next one is surface uh, cleaning so in this process removing contaminants or unwanted layers so suppose if any foreign material uh, foreign material uh, involved or uh, presented on the surface you can uh, remove from the surface to improve uh, adhesion or bonding or optical clarity so adhesion to improve the adhesion property and to improve the bonding property you can remove the first of all the contaminant uh, particles if any any dust particle any other unwanted particles or layers are uh, present in the surface then immediately you have to clean so by using this uh, type of uh, methods you can uh, improve the the properties like uh, adhesion property and bonding property so techniques include solvent cleaning plasma cleaning and ultrasonic cleaning so the in this uh, the surface cleaning uh, these uh, cleaning uh, solvent cleaning and plasma cleaning and ultrasonic cleaning methods comes under this uh, uh, surface cleaning so by using this uh, the, this type of uh, the process you can uh, enhance the uh, properties of the uh, product or properties of the you can change the surface properties of the material so next one is surface co crystallization so modifying the surface at the atomic or molecular level to induce specific crystalline structures so you can modify uh, the surface at the atomic level so by so atomic level or molecular level means you, you can uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, some crystalline structures or you can uh, change the orientation of the uh, crystal structure this can enhance the properties like mechanical strength conductivity or optical behavior so this property also to enhance the properties like mechanical strength so you can improve the uh, strength hardness of the material so hardness or strength of the material means uh, to resist the higher loads so conductivity or optical behavior so more by um, you can obtain uh, these you can enhance these properties by modifying the surface at a molecular level so these uh, this type of uh, process is called as surface co crystallization next is surface modification or biomedical applications so, so the surface modification methods for biomedical application means tailoring surface properties of biomaterials to improve biocompatibility cell adhesion properties and uh, drug delivery so techniques such as surface grafting with uh, bioactive molecules surface flattering for tissue engineering and uh, plasma treatment for uh, sterilization are used in this context so these are the uh, the, the biomedical applications uh, for the surface uh, modifications so by using this uh, method you can improve the biocompatibility or cell adhesion properties so the, the drug delivery and uh, this uh, biomedical the bioactive molecule surface patterning for tissue engineering the plasma treatment is there the sterilization is in this context so these type of uh, modification of methods are there the surface modifications methods are uh, involved in engineering tribology subject to enhance the properties of the, uh, the material or properties of the, the product okay so uh, the before uh, after manufacturing the product we have to apply this type of uh, coatings so it leads to uh, minimize the wear and friction and also uh, 
leads to minimize the cost of the product. The four basic categories of tribological surface modifications are mainly the modification without any material transfer, modification involving material transfer, formation of uh, tribofilm or coating where uh, loss of particles or atoms from the surface. These four categories mainly uh, the main uh, surface modification methods without any material transfer. So, no need to transfer the material uh, one uh, form to another and uh, the modification involving material transfer second method formation of tribofilm or coating already we have discussed in the previous earlier uh, <coughs> slides the coating methods and where the loss of particles or atoms from the surface so already you know so the where means the some loss of material uh, from the, um, the surface next one is the friction and wear testing methods so many testing methods are there to find out the friction and uh, uh, the wear testing. So, we have to select the proper measurement method for proper application. The friction measurement uh, methods in this, the friction measurement methods can be broadly classified into two categories. One is spot friction measuring equipment. The second one is continuous friction measuring equipment. So, one is spot. Uh, is spotly in that uh, during application you can uh, measure the friction. The continuous friction uh, measuring equipment, another friction measurement measuring instrument is there. So that is already we have discussed in uh, earlier sessions the pin on disc. So you can calculate the wear and you can calculate the friction also. So several different models are available for specific applications. So normally. A friction test is run friction test is run with a standard normal load and an instrument system comprising a test wheel capable of measuring the horizontal force developed at the interface of tire and the pavement surface and the corresponding normal. So, component of horizontal force is measured by loaded wheel axis may include tile rolling as resistance and a drag in use of displacement. The component or horizontal force is measured by the loaded wheel axis uh, method is there. It, it include uh, the tile rolling resistance and a drag induced displacement. So, this, uh, this, uh, this type of uh, method comes under this uh, friction measurement. So, another one is a torque measuring device on the other hand measures the component of horizontal force. Next, during hydro planning and the presence of surface uh, contaminants such as sand, fine dust, loose snow and normal force acting over the tight slip area will be smaller than the actual load acting on the wheel axis. So, during hydroplaning uh, and in this uh, hydroplaning test, so the surface contaminants like uh, other materials, uh, dust material and the sand, the loose snow, so all these things acting over the uh, surface, so due to this, uh, these forces, the slip area will be smaller than the actual load. So, acting on the wheel axis. There. That's the full scale measurement of uh, friction. The full scale measurement of friction means the high speed friction measurement devices utilize one or two test tires and measure friction properties, pavement surface using any one of the following methods. So, many methods are there the full scale measurement of uh, friction. So, one is a locked wheel. That in locked wheel 100% uh, slip is there and uh, second one is side force that is usually slip angle 20 degrees and then fixed uh, slip. So, normally between 10 to 20 percent slip and variable slip that is 0 per 0 to 100 percent. And uh, retardation rate is uh, that is uh, declaration 
the measurement of uh, normal abs uh, brake recoil so these are the full scale measurement of uh, the friction devices next uh, locked wheel friction test as per standard material astm e274 the most widely adopted method of measurement of friction for pavement surface in a usa this method is astm e274 the locked wheel friction test so usually it mission operates at speeds between 64 kmph and 97 kmph on wet pavements so at this speed so what will happen the preloaded test wheel is locked completely and then friction force is measured at a slip speed equal to the vehicle speed whenever the slip speed is equal to the vehicle speed there uh, the wheel is uh, the test wheel is locked completely and the friction force is uh, you can calculate the frictional over a small distance of pavement is measured in uh, in which the wheel is locked and for a period of 1 second of travel after which the applied brakes are released so whenever brakes applied after traveling or one second of traveling so you can uh, calculate the friction over a the small distance next uh, the procedure avoids uh, undue wearing of the tire because of locking duration of one second only so in the, in the previous method so in this procedure what will happen the testing the continuous measurement of friction is uh, not possible and the locations of lower friction may be missed so why continuous uh, load is not uh, a constant so that's why you can't calculate the continuous uh, measurement of friction so uh, continuous uh, this uh, the low location uh, of low frictions may be missed some location uh, uh, distance is uh, differ from uh, another location so this test is intended to determine the friction of pavement surface under emergency braking uh, conditions only particularly uh, emergency braking system so particularly when a vehicle does not uh, have anti lock braking system so the, the vehicle is not having abs so uh, that uh, type uh, that in that case only the test is done to determine the friction so locked wheel test results are reported as friction number or skid number so two numbers are there one is uh, friction number and uh, skid number the value of friction number can be calculated from the equations so here is f f into uh, 100 is equal to f s by normal force and uh, friction uh, static force by uh, multiplied with uh, 100 so by using this uh, equation you can calculate the friction number or skid number so locked wheel friction test is usually conducted using smooth tire or uh, the ribbed tire operated between 64 and uh, 96 kmph the smooth tire is preferred for our ribbed tire test for characterizing the pavement macro texture structure because the smooth tire surface is sensitive to surface uh, water film thickness when tested for wet pavement condition so in this uh, two methods are the smooth tire is preferred for our ribbed tire test for characterizing the pavement macro structure and then uh, another one is when tested for wet pavement conditions so in this uh, the water film thickness the, the tire surface is sensitive to the surface water film thickness the test is suitable for straight uh, selections sections of the roads but not curves rounded about or junctions the test is suitable for always in a straight sections only so not for roads in a curve curve type and uh, junctions junctions not suitable next one is coming to the wear measuring uh, methods so in this uh, in table this uh, shown the classification of uh, wear various types of uh, wear and the characteristics of the particular wear and uh, uh, what are the observations the first one is sliding wear so in this wear uh, wear due to localized bonding between uh, outstanding uh, the outer the contacting solid surfaces uh, leading to material transfer between the two surfaces or loss from either surface so already we know so we have discussed in uh, Uh, the types of uh, the waste topic. So plastic deformation are 
crack uh, nucleation and uh, propagation in the surface uh, these are the uh, the major characteristics uh, the definitions uh, of the sliding wear what are the observations in the observations in the sliders bearings gears and uh, camshafts generally this type of sliding wear you can see so the next one is fretting wear the wear arising a result of fretting so that is a small amplitude oscillatory motion so usually tangential uh, between two solid surfaces in contact the press fit falls with a small sliding uh, motion so these are the observations the abrasive wear so you know the wear due to hard particles or uh, hard uh, the, the protuberance forced against and moving uh, along a solid surface so generally this type of abrasive wear observed in sliding surface uh, at the uh, at the removing equipment similarly the erosive wear wear due to mechanical interaction between uh, the surface and a fluid a, a multi component uh, fluid impeding liquid or solid particles some uh, material uh, erosion is there so generally this type of uh, erosion wear occurred in turbine pipes for coal slurries and uh, helicopter blades fretting wear the wear of solid surface caused by fracture arising from material fretting so generally this type this type of uh, phenomena uh, observed in uh, ball bearing or oral bearing glass is uh, solid slider uh, Um, equipments cavitation wear a form of erosion causing material to wear by the action of vapor bubbles in a very turbulent liquid the soft bearing surfaces so these are the major classification of wear the um, type of wear and then what are the characteristics uh, and definitions of this uh, particular wear and the observations the, the observ the observations of this uh, uh, all these types of uh, wears next identification of wear so examination of the wear varies that is uh, collected material and examination of the worn surfaces so one is large uh, lumps imply had a wear and uh, fine particles uh, oxidative wear and uh, chip like particles abrasive wear and then uh, flake like particles delamination wear so according to the, the the loss of material the waste material so the you, you can uh, examine so you can uh, test the, the the loss of material removed material so according to the the material uh, material examination you can uh, uh, you can say uh, the type of wear so large lump simply means adhesive uh, wear the fine particles uh, indicates oxidative wear chips like uh, particles uh, abrasive wear like uh, flakes or delamination wear so examination of one surface the surface one so the heavy the, the heavy tearing implies adhesive wear and the scratches imply abrasive wear the burnishing indicates non adhesive wear so according to the impression the impression of the uh, wear so after uh, finishing the particular um, operation by seeing the surface you can say this type of wear occur so one is heavy uh, tearing implies adhesive wear scratches implies abrasive and burnishing indicates non adhesive wear so the wear measuring methods similarly the friction methods here also wear measuring methods are there so a pin on disc or uh, fitted so already you know the pin on disc a pin continuously rotates uh, slides on a rotating beam rotating disc so this type of equipment is called as pin on disc by using this pin on disc uh, uh, you can calculate the friction and uh, wear also next wear tried diameter was measured and uh, the load applied in the dead cell and the values of displacement the time speed load and diameter of disc were entered by using this uh, pin on disc uh, method so displacement value of every second and the coefficient of friction were noted from lvdt and the wear values were calculated from displacement value you can calculate the wear from displacement values so these are the, these type of methods you can uh, uh, apply for the wear the measurement
So these are the references I have taken. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.